Hi, welcome to Crunchy Birth Vibes. Um, I'd like to apologize to my subscribers because, of course, after I made my very first video, my phone decided to cross the rainbow bridge. And so, uh, it took weeks to get a new one. So here we are, weeks later, making the second video. Um, I'm actually going to tell this story in three separate videos. So there's going to be a part one, a part two, and a part three. Um, this video is about um, her brother, and her brother's name was Tyler, and uh, he was my infant birth loss um, due to Factor Five, which I did not know that I had at the time. So I'll go ahead and start with um, just a briefing of the labor and birth story. Um, he was my first. And I decided to do hypno babies with him, um, just the same as I decided to with her later on. Um, uh, everything was going normal. There were no signs of distress from him. He, we had the fetal, the handheld fetal monitor. He never showed any. Um, uh, dips in heart rate. He never showed abnormalities or showed that he was in distress of any kind. Um, I was in labor for about 36 plus hours. It may have been closer to 48. I'm a little fuzzy on the timeline. Um, I do know that my water broke at 2.30 a.m. and that he was born at about 10 o'clock the next day. Um, <clears throat> and I pushed for about two hours off and on total. <laughs> you can see why me getting videos done today is a little difficult. <laughs> Somebody doesn't want to nap at all today. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I experienced all kinds of things throughout this labor and birth, even though I still wouldn't say that. There was any pain. Um, hypno babies is certainly a godsend. I I was not in any pain, but I will say it's always effort. <laughs> always labor and birth is always an effort, and I was definitely putting mine in with with this one. Um, he was my first, and um, uh, I had a lot of factors working against me that I wasn't aware of at that time. Um, uh, I was experiencing exhaustion, um, my midwife was giving me B12 shots, um, uh, what, what? Well, I also, um, he had been so deeply engaged for so long that I, my ability to pee was compromised too, so, um, um, luckily, my mom was there, who's a nurse, and she cast me twice while I was in labor with him. And, um, again, he showed no signs of distress the whole time I was in labor until he was born. He was born and he had an abnormal color and he was not breathing on his own. Um, 911 was immediately called. My midwife was doing um, her CPR training on him. Um, right away <laughs> and he just never became responsive um, he was taken away in an ambulance and um, that's where things quickly became sad and um, we figured out just how serious everything was um, if you want to continue the story I'm going to make another video that continues the story. Um, so, uh, yeah. Keep following if you want to hear the rest of the story. Thanks. Bye. Hi, this is part two to Tyler's story, my, uh, the story of my infant loss due to factor five. 
Okay, he was taken away in the ambulance and um, his color was abnormal and we, um, my midwife on inspecting everything and um, my doula who have been taking pictures, they both all realized that the cord was also abnormal and there was a bulbous place in the cord where um, it was pretty obvious there was a blood clot in the cord. And um, we get to the hospital and they put me in a wheelchair and I'm taken up to the NICU immediately. The no. doctor who was there, oh, <laughs> I'm not a fan, but he, um, he quickly told us that our son's chances were very slim, 10% to be exact is what he said. And, you know, obviously the things that you would expect to see in the NICU were happening to my son. He was hooked up to all these things and they um, asked us if he could just be put on a 30, basic, like a three day um, semi-coma state. Like he was going to be, his body temperature was going to be cooled in case it was an infection of some kind and um, he was going to be kept on life support for tests and all that and we agreed to that. Well shortly after we had been shown to our own room for temporary purposes um, the doctor came into our room uh, I'd say at like 3 a.m. around there and they told us that Tyler was already having seizures so um, things got even more dire from there, and, <clears throat> you know, um, we went through those couple of days, it was a hard few, it was a hard, hard two to three days, and, um, all the tests were coming back not great, and the final one was the test for brain activity, and they sent results to Dallas, to a specialist and this specialist says, said he saw absolutely zero brain activity being done on his own so we made the hard decision to to take him off of life support and let him go and it's like she knows what I'm talking about but um <clears throat> um after all of that, you know, we we set aside a special time and and day to <clears throat> take him off of life support, and we had a, we luckily had an Amarillo a photographer to take pictures of us and our son, um, and it was just a really hard time. Um, <clears throat> Um, I don't need to go into much detail about that because if you've been through it or if you even if you haven't you can only imagine that it wasn't the greatest day <laughs> um, we had his funeral just a few days uh, not very long after like a couple of days later and it happened to land right on my due date that was rough <laughs> You know, here I was on the day that he was actually supposed to be born and we were burying him instead. It was just a harsh um, timing. Um, one thing I'll never forget on that day is um, Andrew and I were in the car in front, like right behind the um, funeral home. Of car that was carrying him and I looked behind us and there was a huge line of headlights behind us and I felt so supported um, and um, I will say that this um, this kicked off a, a big life-changing journey for me and for my husband and I will cover more specifics on that in my next video, which is part three.